This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Bingo, you know, it reminds me of the last line of Portnoy's complaint by Philip Roth. What was it? He said, and now we begin. And now we begin Hawaii, the state of clean energy, here on a Wednesday. It's our flagship energy show, supported by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, of which Maria Tomei is a member of the steering committee and one of the hardest working people in the welcome to the show. Well, Your show, you. Maria. No, well, <laughs> co-host, co-host, yes. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. Great to have you here. So let's uh, let's uh, you know introduce people at the table. To my left is uh, Shannon Tanganan, and she is the spokesperson for Hawaiian Electric. Hi, Shannon. Hi, nice to be Thanks here. Thanks for coming down Thank here. Thank you. And to her left is uh, Dingalitzwe Clarence Nube. Right? Yes, mostly. Yes. Yeah, mostly. Okay. Yeah. And and he is with Hawaii Pacific University about green business. As in, he's a green business awardee yes. of Hawaii Pacific University. And and Maria will tell us more about him when she introduces him. But first, we want to do Hawaiian Electric uh, news. And the news which you've been hearing from so many places is your proactive change of these coupler devices throughout, what, Kaka'ako, Kaka in order to make mm -hmm. service more reliable down there. Can you yeah. talk about it? Yeah, we're working. Um, we started Monday, so it's Monday through Thursdays for two weeks, and then we built in some contingency for the third week. And we're working in Kaka'ako, Ivile, and Ala Moana areas. We, what we're doing is we're going into manholes, about 70 manholes, and replacing about 400 of these places here. That looks yeah. very heavy. Can I just lift that up? Sure. Just you can do some it. bicep curls. Yeah, biceps. Oh, this is, you know, you made it look light just now. It's not light. <laughs> Clarence, try it. Just <laughs> tell me if you think this is heavy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's heavy. Yeah. Right, this is a heavy <laughs> piece of gear. So what does that piece of gear do? Well, it connects the high voltage cables to the circuits that serve our homes and businesses in the area. And we had, um, I guess over the past year, some unplanned outages. And we found that this was the cause. The some previous of, version. Yeah, yeah, previous version. Some of them were failing. So what we're going. So what, what happens doing, when it fails? If one of these fails, then the the, the, the power goes out. The power. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not complicated. No. <laughs> yeah. Science. Yeah. yeah. So the power goes out, and um, so what we're trying to do is prevent the unplanned outages, and so we're going in proactively. Um, in order to do the work, though, we do need to power down our equipment. So we've had planned outages Mondays through Thursdays, 10 p.m to 6 a.m. Okay, and this means that people can get more rest? Yes, <laughs> we'd like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, I don't think that's very inconvenient. Most people, you know, go to sleep around well, that time anyway. You know? Yeah, we know that we are causing an inconvenience. Not uh, everyone goes to bed at 10, so um, we're just asking that they plan ahead, you know, turn off the computers, you know, save all your documents, yeah, yeah, stuff do like that. that. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot of things you don't really think about. Yeah. Um, so we're just asking them to be, um, you know, to plan ahead. Um, not everyone will be affected every single night of the project. Mm. Um, we're working in different sections, the different nights, mm. so, you know, it's, but some people will experience multiple outages. Oh, really? O yeah. Over maybe yeah. more than one night? Yeah. Yes. So what, what's the, what does it depend on, whether you have a two-week um, process or a three-week process? Well, weather, for instance, mm -hmm. um, just in general um, working conditions. Uh, we have to dewater the manholes before the workers can even go in. Can, can we talk about start? that? Why, sure. why do you have to dewater? A little water is okay, right? Well, we can't be working uh, with, you know, because, water, because it's underwater. 25 kilovolts. Yeah, is 25 kilovolts. If you, you, want to, you want to be a ground on 25 kilovolts, it'll ruin your whole day. It would. It really would. <laughs> so, what we're doing is, again, dewatering, powering down all the equipment um, so that our crews can work safely. Yeah, okay. Gee, it's not like a big effort. You, you must have a big team. It's a huge effort. Yeah. Um, every night we have about 100 employees, wow. crews. Hmm you know, working crew members. Major, major. Yeah. So is this, uh, it's kind of unprecedented to have such a huge effort on a proactive basis. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, we have not done anything this huge, I don't know if ever. So, <laughs> um, 
having planned outages, having the, the crews, you know, logistically, this is a huge infrastructure upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but of course, the stakes are high too. You don't want to have outages in this neighborhood. It's getting more. What's the word? Intense. More uh, yeah, concentrated. Yeah, it's a high density time. area. High density. So we want to make sure that they have reliable service. Yeah. Kind of improve service reliability. It's, I guess it's part of you know the growing pains of Kakaako is what it is. You put all those condos in there, all those people. It was like twenty thousand units or something like that. It's a yeah. lot. Of, a lot of units. It's definitely a growing area, and this is the only area with these. Uh, the 25 kilovolt um, cabling. Okay, well, so 25 kilovolts is not necessarily, you know, the level of kilovolts all around. This is unusual in the sense that the kilovolt number is so high, and what this needs, what the couplers need to carry, is mm -hmm. is so high. Yeah, usually when you're talking about residential areas, you have 12 kilovolts um, lines. So the 25 kilovolts is double what we we normally use to serve homes and businesses. That's because the uh, substations are at some distance from the from the areas involved. Yes, definitely. It's in the outskirts of the Kaka'ako, Ivile, um, Ala Moana areas. We just don't have enough space to have more substations, mm -hmm. build more substations in the heart of Kaka'ako. Yeah. So we um, instead chose to use these types of lines. So, <clears throat> Sana, is this going to happen again we elsewhere? No, because it's this, a one -time is, yeah, deal. this is a one-time deal. Okay. Yeah. It's, it really says something about the utility. What do you think it says about the utility? Well, it says that we're, we're thinking ahead and being proactive and just trying to avoid inconvenience in the future yeah. for our customers. Yeah, that's great. Important for a growing neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Maria, what, what are your points of curiosity on this? I see you <laughs> looking at the cupboard here. <laughs> you want to lift it up, too? No, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I know about this project, so yeah. I'm glad that um, it's being addressed. I yeah. think it's important, um, you know, we, we wish it could be done without the inconvenience, um, but given that it has to be done um, in a timely manner, I think, um, yeah. ho hopefully it all goes well. Yeah, and, and thus far, the, good. the first two nights have been good, you know, and the, the second night was the real test you know, earlier um, overnight because we had four circuits that we were working on. I mean, mm. that was just huge. Um, on Monday, we only were working on two circuits. So I think yesterday, um, you know, starting from 10 p.m., it was really the, the test. And so we're working in the same area this evening and we'll hopefully things will go smoothly throughout the project and we'll be done within two weeks. Mm. So, so far you're on schedule. So far we are on yeah, schedule, yes. Clarence, do you have any points of curiosity you want to address to Shannon? <laughs> um, I was actually wondering, you know, I, I didn't actually know that there were actually, uh, this was an ongoing project. Uh, I only discovered that yet last night when I got home. Oh, I really? Guess, uh, yeah, yeah they, were, they were doing the work, I guess, until uh -huh. 10 a.m. So it's a good thing that they, as you mentioned, they've been proactive and uh, it's, got, it's got to be done. Um, yeah. It's long overdue. Uh, yeah, I say, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was... It's been a year where we've had these issues, you know, service reliability um, in these certain areas, and we just wanted to make sure that we are addressing it and getting getting the project done. Okay. Well, I, want, I think one thing is to be noted, and that is you're going out to tell people. You've yes. issued a press release. You've been on the media, other media mm -hmm. before us, even before us. <laughs> and you're telling everyone so that no no one is surprised at yeah. 10 o'clock. Yeah. Yes, we were definitely proactive. We sent out letters. Our folks canvassed certain areas, visited businesses. So we are definitely out in the community, you know, trying to make sure that everybody is aware of what's happening. Yeah, that's clear. Yeah. So you want to address the public for a minute? There they are behind the red light. What what message would you leave with them today? Well, we just want to let you know that we're working hard to improve service in the Ivile, Kaka'ako, and Ala Moana areas and to say thank you for being patient with us. We know that the uh, um, outages are an inconvenience, but we wanted to do this project in, in a way where we had the least impact on customers. Thank, thank you, Shannon. Shannon uh, Tanganon, she's spokesperson for Hawaiian Electric, telling us about their 
special proactive project. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming down. I appreciate it. We're going to be patient now and take one minute off, and then we'll come back. And when we come back, Shannon will be back at work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. We've got to give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. Try a little more, hard on every more, let's do what we can. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of the Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Do you want to be cool? Like me? If so, watch my show on Tuesdays at 1 called Out of the Comfort Zone. I sang this song to you because I think you either are cool or have the potential to be seriously cool. And I want you to come watch my show where I bring in experts who talk all about easy strategies to be healthier, happier, build better relationships, and make your life a success. So come sit with the cool kids at Out of the Comfort Zone on Tuesdays at 1. See you. Okay, we're back. And as I told you, Shannon left. <laughs> so we're <laughs> just, just, just on, us alone now, you guys. Okay. So um, at last. Um, so I uh, just want to point out, as she mentioned during the break, that this project is now. And because this, this video may play on YouTube for a while, we should say the project started on Monday, the 16th of July. 2018. 2018. <laughs> yeah. The project will end two or three weeks hence. Yeah. And so by August 2nd in, or so. In, yeah, or August 2nd or so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. So if you're watching this after that, then yeah. it's so, not news. Yeah, don't get anymore. too excited. The lights will go <laughs> off on you. Yeah. Okay, Maria, uh, you know, would you make the formal introduction yes. uh, of our special guest today? Okay, we're really happy to have a guest from Hawaii Pacific University. Um, the reason we invited them was we had formerly heard from the Hawaii Green Business Program. Gail Suzuki Jones was on and talking about that program and having some winners. And I said, hey, we should hear from the folks who have done the um, things and got recognized for it. And HPU was one of them. So Mr. Nkube, um, he, he goes by Clarence, but his real name is... Um, Dingaliswe? Dingaliswe, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so he's here to talk to us about some of the wonderful things that Hawaii Pacific University is doing um, in the area of not just energy efficiency, but also renewable, renewable energy and sustainability, and even things reaching into the community and helping with some of the natural areas and teaching the students about this as well. So welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome yeah, to the show. Uh, thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work hard to pronounce it to Dingalitsi. <laughs> And, yeah. and, uh, and hope that I did that right. Yeah, yeah, okay, you, almost, right. you got okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what's going on at HPU. Okay. Um, so we recently got recognized, actually, on um, May uh, 2018, May 3, uh, for uh, sustainability initiatives. Uh, so we basically, we went through um, what we call the Hawaii Green Business Program Checklist. Uh, we had to uh, satisfy uh, uh, things on the checklist, so related to either energy efficiency, waste management. Uh, we looked at uh, you know, recycling. Uh, we looked at water conservation. Uh, innovation was actually one of them as well. And, and uh, we, as part of our programming, we did um, uh, implement a lot of energy efficiency projects as, as part of the Aloha Tower project. Uh, we, uh, implemented also, we have a, we, we did a PPA, so we actually have a PV system. Uh, first phase was just completed uh, sometime this year, uh, and uh, that's a 310 kilowatt, uh, so, so PV system. And currently we're actually on doing the second phase for our PV system, which, we, which will give us an additional uh, 350 kilowatts, uh, so for a total of 660 kilowatt uh, PV system. So what, what facilities uh, does this serve? 
Uh, it's mostly the lower tower marketplace. So basically building one, two, three, and four. So the whole of, uh, so the entire roof. So we'll be actually putting a PV system. I have a recollection of meeting you there. Yeah, we met. Yeah, we once. met on the sidewalk. You yeah, said hello. Yeah, I said, said hello. hello. Yeah. It's like 60, 90 days ago. Yeah. Yes, we did. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know at the time this is what you did. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so uh, um, where are you in the project now? I mean, are you, are you in the planning phase or are you actually constructing? Have you finished construction on some or part of it? Oh, the uh, first phase was completed, so it's, actually, it's online. It's online right speak. now, the whole, the, the whole the, thing. The second phase, the first second phase, phase, first phase. Okay. So right now we're, we're, they're working on the second phase, and we ho hope to have that up in 2019, and ho hopefully have the whole system up and running. It's all solar. Solar, PV, yeah, yeah PV, PPA. You know, it's yeah. interesting, and I, I don't know if you've addressed this, but it's interesting yeah. that um, just seaward of the, of the medical school, which is what, you know, half a mile away, maybe less, um, there's uh, deep sea water, you know, what, what do you call it, OTEC. There's OTEC deep sea cold water out there off the shelf, not too far, maybe a quarter mile or something, from the medical school. And in fact, when they designed the medical school, they designed it to use OTEC for air conditioning of some of the buildings there. And even now today, some of the buildings in the medical school are air conditioned in part. Seawater air conditioning. Seawater air conditioning, yeah. yeah. Swack, actually. Yeah, Seawater air conditioning, but yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, all yeah. right. Same, yeah. the same yeah. concept. You're getting the cold water, and you're, say, you know, you're doing things that are good um, from yeah. an energy perspective yeah. and using your local resources instead yeah. of you know, burning fuel. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. What, what that tells me is, although it's not perfect, like in Nelha, in Kona, it is perfect because the, the drop-off of the shelf there is straight, straight down, down for, I don't yeah. know, thousands of feet. Um, that's not quite that way yeah. off, off uh, John A. Burns School of Medicine. Yeah. Um, and so they don't have the same OTEC, OTEC leverage there. But they do have some, and they are yeah. using it. And, and they need cold water. Yeah, you know, they, they need, cold, they need yeah. chilling for Sh the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, but, and the, yeah. in fact, there was a company that was, uh, they never really got it together, but there was a company called Honolulu Seawater Air Conditioning Company, and they were going to do all the downtown buildings. So I take it you haven't heard from them recently, and we should have them on the show one yeah, of these the days. Show, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they're still yeah. doing it. Well, let's hear from we, we should look. Yeah, we should investigate. Yeah. But my point is, does HPU consider this a possibility too? Deep sea, uh, deep sea water, um, yeah. OTEC type air conditioning, what have you? It, it, it would have been uh, a, a possibility. I think we kind of missed the window. So basically, uh, the project, uh, when we did the project, I think uh, we kind of missed each other. Mm. It could, could have been a possibility. But mm. uh, we already had a, a, a central plant, so a cooling tower system, condenser water system already set up. It's part of our HVAC system. I think that often happens. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that people, capital interest management is always concerned about using the most proven technology, the one yeah. they are sure to a moral certainty that it will work. And they look all around, see everybody else is using it. So they say, we're going we're to use this yes. too because nobody would take a, a chance of being, you know, adventurous uh, when it, it might not work. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, when you're the first thing you do is efficiency and so they've yeah. done a ton of stuff in efficiency because if you can keep the heat out of the building then you yeah. don't have to air condition the heat out yeah. so yeah. before you would even size something like that you would yeah. do everything you can to improve your lighting reduce your yeah, you know, equipment uh, yeah so they've, they've done all sorts of um, improvements on their buildings not only the envelope but also yeah. the, equipment the equipment inside the buildings and there was one feature that I saw in here that I thought was really cool um, even CO2 sensors so that you yeah. can tell that you have enough fresh air and oxygen mm -hmm. for these young um, folks who are yes. learning in, yeah. your, in your environments, you know. Actually, yeah. you know, I shouldn't say that because students come in all ages and the yeah. professors also <laughs> need, to, <laughs> need to have good quality for it. But it makes a, it makes a difference, you know, yeah. so the quality of the lighting, the quality of the air, you know, and so you yeah, know, I don't know yeah. if you want to talk about and yeah, we, uh, that was actually part of our lower tower project, uh, mm -hmm. was HP took over the project and we did implement a, a number of, um, you know, lead uh, principles in terms of the, the team that was on there. We, we really got into depth in terms of, you know, trying to uh, focus on energy efficiency, improving the, bu the building envelope, improving the existing equipment and upgrading a lot of the equipment. And uh, it's actually uh, yeah, it saved the university, actually. Uh, 
uh, in terms of dollars and, and kilowatt hours, uh, a lot of kilowatt hours. Yeah. And, yeah. But this is yeah. mostly about air conditioning. Yeah, just air conditioning. Yeah, sealing the building up a little better. The, yeah, sealing and, the building. And providing uh, renewables for driving the air conditioning equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I just, you know, one thing comes to mind, and, and it always comes to mind. Maria and I have this conversation yeah. on a regular basis. It's climate change. Okay? So, mm -hmm. you know. Our theme for this. We know. Ooh, yeah, yes. Yeah. We, yes, we know that things are getting hotter. They are. Yeah, they are. What did I hear recently? And this is not directly on point, but uh, the, the rat lungworm uh, experience in Hawaii is, is going up in dramatic numbers. And the reason is the, uh, the, the uh, ecology is changing because of the increase in temperature. And so uh, you have a proliferation of that particular uh, worm and so the disease. So it has all kinds of secondary effects. Yeah. Any kind of change in, in the ambient temperature has secondary effects. Okay, so what I get is that you want, HPU wants to keep these kids cool. This is dormitories, yeah? Yeah. They oh, want to keep these, they want to make it space. comfortable for these yeah. kids. So, um, and it's getting hotter. You, you don't have to, you know, question me on that. No, it, it is. is. It is getting hotter. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, so it's more important to keep them cool, and it, you need more cooling to keep them cool when it gets hotter outside. At the same time, you, you have to spend more and you know, provide more energy, so to speak, to keep them cool when it gets hotter outside, like a, like a spiral up. Um, so the question is, are you saving money? That's my question. Good thing, yeah, you bring up a good question. Um, <laughs> we have actually w focused a lot on, uh, in terms of, we're bringing cooling yeah, of HVAC system to the students, but what we have done actually with the equipment, we've invested in uh, energy efficient uh, premium uh, pumps and motors, and uh, we actually added uh, variable fre frequency drives uh, to our cooling towers and our motors to kind of reduce. Uh, so with our cooling towers, we're not operating them at, at full capacity, so we, we have the opportunity to actually just uh, use one cooling tower per, 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 per building and as part of our energy efficiency goals. And, uh, and uh, I think that has actually helped uh, quite a bit in terms of... One instead yeah. of more than one? Yeah, yeah. How many were there before? Uh, we have uh, four cooling towers, so wow. basically, yeah, that actually operate the building. But uh, they're very efficient because uh, we've been able to implement a number of those, uh, upgrade most of the equipment so to what, energy. What I get is that the yeah. cooling tower is cooling the water that goes through the air conditioning system. If the yeah. cooling tower is not efficient, then it takes more energy to cool the water in the cooling tower. Furthermore, yeah. if you can have one tower instead of four, is saving a lot of energy. Yeah, saving a lot of energy. High absolutely. percent. Yeah. And, and finally, um, what they're going to say is uh, uh, that, you know, cooling tower is the central the core mechanism, mechanism of any air conditioning system. And a cooling tower all by itself costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to buy, build, and to maintain. And it has to be maintained. So if you have only one instead of four, already right there in the numbers, you're saving a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. And it's gone so, beyond the buildings. Yes, too, it's yeah. beyond the buildings as well. Yeah, transportation. We, transportation as well. We looked into actually reducing our carbon footprint on campus. So we do encourage a lot of students uh, to use alternative forms of transportation. So uh, currently, we actually have an enterprise car share program on property. Uh, we do have Biki as well, a Biki station. We partnered up with Biki, so students have the option of either you know, riding Biki or taking the bus as well. We have a bus location there. We have a car share program as well, an on online car sharing program called HPU Green Ride, where students can go online and, uh, and look if they're looking for other students uh, who are interested in either walking or car sharing or carpooling, they have that option of actually mm -hmm. going online and um, finding students to, to carpool or car share. So with, yeah. with all regard for the fact that yeah. You're an important person in the in the energy mm, energy you know facilities for HPU and Aloha Tower. What would happen if you weren't there? What would happen if nothing happened? If if nobody took any steps to to make this more efficient? Uh, what would the natural? This is like the, you know the the ghost of Christmas future. Um, <laughs> what would happen if, if if you stopped, or rather, you never started? Never started. What would either. happen to the project, to Aloha Tower, to the air conditioning there, to the students, whatnot? Yeah, 
if, no, we're, if we're not implemented any of these uh, energy efficiency measures and uh, any of the, the green principles, I think would have actually ended up costing us a lot of money to maintain um, and uh, wouldn't have been as efficient as it is uh, right now and long term wouldn't have helped us uh, save our en energy costs. So it's a good thing we, we ended up doing this. So this is actually helping not just the university, because we're committed, uh, the university is actually committed uh, to uh, the improving the economic, social, and environmental well-being of not just the university, but the state of Hawaii as well. So and do the students yeah. care? I mean, the students and the faculty and staff, um, does it, is it something they're proud of? Yeah, they're proud of it. Yeah, they're very proud. And, um, and uh, we have, you know, uh, actually a green program as well. So I actually graduated from the Global Leadership Sustainable Development Program. Uh, which is uh, a program at HPU and uh, we have uh, a lot of students in who study environmental science and who are very passionate uh, about sustainability. So if and you didn't have the program they would probably be asking for one, demanding yeah. one. Um, yeah, so why don't, yeah. Well it strikes yeah. me that um, if I'm a student, you know, there's a lot of stress in being a student. I'm sure we can all remember that. Um, and um, if it gets hot you know, you are, it's very unpleasant, especially if it gets hotter all the time. Um, and you don't study as well, and you don't think as well, and your life, quality of life as a student is really degraded if, if you're not in, in a good environment. So I think it's important for students to have this. Yeah, the core. The, core. You know, yeah. the other thing is um, going forward, okay, let's assume you finish the project. What's the next project? Oh, what, what's been on my mind is actually net zero. Ah, net zero. Oh. Net zero has definitely been on my mind. Uh, was I just saw the, uh, the UH University in, in Maui, which is actually going net zero. So that's, uh, finish that's it? my, is it yeah, the case? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's actually my dream and, uh, you know, hope to, I think th those, those will be the next steps after energy efficiency, kind of go net zero where we kind of reduce, completely reduce, reuse, recycle reduce our waste on campus. Well, that's pretty yeah. exciting. Oh, good for you. Yeah, thank you. So thank is you. your experience in this area from before, before you came, or what? Uh, I was into, actually, environmental, I was into conservation, actually, when I was still back home in Zimbabwe, and, uh, you know, passionate about the environment, and, uh, you know, uh, tr trying to be the change, you know, make, make things uh, better. So when I moved here, uh, I, I was actually uh, interested in actually joining the program here that had that focus, the sustainability aspect uh, of being here. So I'm actually in the right place because Hawaii is now, um, you know, the hotbed for research and, uh, you know, blue startups. Uh, people are actually passionate about the environment. And I think uh, I'm, in the, I'm actually in the right place in terms of. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. So is what you're doing going to be helpful to other organizations? I mean, for example, um, say I'm with, uh, yeah. what, uh, uh, West Oahu. I, I don't know what their situation yeah. is. Yeah. And uh, I come around and, and I say, uh, pardon me, Dingalize, <laughs> <laughs> can, can you show me what you did? Because yeah. I want to do the same thing. I'm not too far from the water and I yeah. have a lot of heat here and it's getting hotter over there. And I have students and whatnot. Can you help me? Yeah, in terms of, uh, I think those are actually, this provides opportunities uh, uh, for us to share ideas and best practices. So this, this, I've been thinking about that as, a, as an opportunity actually with other universities, organizations who who have implemented a number of uh, projects that are energy efficient or sustainable to kind of learn uh, from them and uh, kind of learn what the best practices are at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Is there an organization of, of guys like you who compare notes and break bread and and um, you know, share your technologies and your plans and designs and aspirations. <laughs> Maybe not designs as such, but uh, I do have a, kind of a network, um, mm -hmm. uh, like the sustainability coordinator at University of Hawaii, Matt Lynch, and uh, a number of people who are actually involved in sustainability. Um, I'm also on the uh, uh, on the board as well for the USGBC Hawaii as well. So we have a number. People who are passionate about the, the environment, whether it's a built environment, it could be architecture or engineering, and so it's kind of the different sectors. Great. Maria, yours, your turn. Yeah, and well. You, you know, I mean, you can 
it can pursue this line of questioning or any other line. Yeah, no, of this way. is excellent because you know you mentioned the mentorship part of it. You yeah. know, so learning from what others have done and also sharing your experience. Yeah. And sometimes people focus on the buildings only. Um, yeah. There is more awareness now of the importance of transportation, but you've yeah. also got a bunch of water saving, landscape design, yeah. using less thirsty plants. You know, if you do have to water something, water them, you know, not in yeah. the heat of the day. Yeah. A lot of the common sense stuff that you hear, but you bring it all together and, you, you know, you, you show it being, being done, yeah. you know. Um, so I think that's that's an excellent um, yeah, excellent way, yeah. Way, and even the selection of your fixtures, I guess there's some water 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 wise or, or water, EP, sense, yeah, EP, water, EP, sense, water sense water sense fixtures. You know, so you've got your yeah. Energy Star equipment, your water sense fixtures, and so a lot of it is keeping up with what is available, you know, yeah. and bringing it together. So it doesn't even have to be a grandiose new design, but making sure you incorporate the best of the best. The best and, of the best. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No, and then sharing yeah. success and failures, because maybe some of the stuff doesn't work quite, quite as happens. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, know, you can do that with your yep. network, right? You can yep. talk about, yeah, we yeah. use this and this and this, and, and you know, we installed it five years ago, and that one is still working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better than trial and error. <laughs> trial and error, and you get right? You the benefit of somebody else exactly, who tried it. Exactly, the experience, yeah. 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 Well, if, if I were you and I were called to summarize where we, you know where this fits in the larger land, the HPU project fits in the larger landscape. And uh, first, I, I would ask about the Green Business Awardee, what that means, and where that comes from. But I would I would also you know try to put it in the larger landscape because yeah. what it means is a it's a level of awareness. It's not simply the technology. Yeah. It's, it's it's having everybody in the state who who is responsible for serious capital concentrations and big buildings. Um, and facilities in general think about these things and it's 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 the it should be it is becoming the new normal mm -hmm. um, and we have got to move in this direction and I think I think uh, Clarence uh, Ding, Ding, Ding Lee's way, way is doing exactly that so this is all a very optimistic thing and maybe it'll catch on well it is catching on yeah. I think yeah. and yeah. it's also continuing yeah. because what they're doing there you know with buildings yeah they last a long time so it's very important to get your buildings right. But what they're also doing is education. And so sharing with the students what they're doing and a respect for the sustainability aspect, I was also impressed by some of the elements on their, um, their program. Hawaii Nature Center, um, Loko Ea Fish Pond, Papahana Kualoa, Pali Lookout um, with the Watershed Partnership. So you know these types of activities are getting people to be aware of the parts of the ecosystem that are providing the water or need to be protected, you know, the shoreline, the mountains, everything mm -hmm. in between. So it's not just what we're doing in our built environments, but also respecting and appreciating the yeah. environment surrounding yeah. us. So. Yeah, so our Student uh, Life Office actually uh, has the, that program, the Hawaii Spotlight Program. So, which has been a great program. They get to, students have the opportunity to actually go to, uh, in, out into the community and actually uh, work on some of these projects and kind of help. So th that's been an eye opener for a lot of students who've either moved to the who have moved here from the mainland or mm. kind of like they came here and did not know this was here. Uh, this opportunity was available and kind of kind of opened up their eyes and and uh, some of them are passionate now about yeah. the environment and yeah. And you want to send every one of them yeah. out there with a, yeah. an increased awareness about this, so that yeah. wherever they go, whatever they do, they bring that awareness to you know, to other facilities and other situations. So, uh, you're at the front end of things. Yeah. Uh, well, there's room for improvement. Uh, we, you know, I go, usually we go through the checklist and we go through, you know, a number of programs, but there's definitely uh, room to, to grow and to do more. So what is yeah. Green Business uh, Award? What you is missed that? the show. Ooh. We had Gail Suzuki Jones. It's actually yeah. a DBAD coordinated with Department of Health yeah. and some and, and other partners as well. And yeah. every year they have Green Bus Business Awards, and they um, yeah. So, they we, so what them. show should I look at to find out more about Green oh, Business? Oh, something Award. last month, several weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so <laughs> she recommended me for the show. And so you yeah. got an award, is that it? Yes, yes. we got an award. Oh, right. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. We're yeah. out of time. Maria, can you, can you summarize as you will and say yes. farewell? Thank you. Well, you know, the past, this summer, I guess, our theme is sustainability, climate change, mitigation, and adaptation. And so we've had, you know, 
from the bad news of sea level rise um, impacting some of our very valuable and favorite um, and very sensitive ecosystems to the more positive of, well, you know, people are working on solutions and sharing those solutions. Um, and there's all, all sorts of um, activity happening, not just on the planning side and the analysis side, but also proactively as well. So the theme of sustainability, you know, you can kind of pick where you want to be on, on the curve between um, extremely fearful, as we all, we all should take it seriously, but we should not be paralyzed. You know, and we need to keep an eye on what's happening that we can do to make a difference. And we need to celebrate those and to um, encourage them. And shows like this, thank you very much, Jay, and thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, um, thank you yeah, for the invitation. Jiggly -jiggly. Yeah, it's been an eye opener and an honor to actually be on your show. Thank you, yeah. Jiggly. Thank you for being here. It's nice to meet you the second time. The second time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria Tomei. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Jay. And being co-host. What's next week? Mm. Next week. Oh, yes, we have Architects. Yes, oh. Architects Hawaii. Oh, excellent. Yes. Architects Hawaii. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's at the core of things for I, sure. I think they're yeah. using the acronym AHL, and I think Lester yeah, is going to be with us. Oh, Lester. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hard to think about I that know, one. Lester, yeah. I was focused on this one. Yes, yeah. Thank you both. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha.